Good morning and welcome everyone to Urban Talk. Today we will talk with our friends from Singapore. They are the key person who connect the technology and digital infrastructure communities. Now let's just to welcome Vincent Liu, the CEO and Global Community Manager. Stephanie Chiang, the Managing Director. And Caroline Woods, Head of Production of W Media. Sawadika. 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 Hello. Hello, how are you doing? Good. Yeah, very well. Thank you for having us. Okay, are you ready? Yes, yes we are. We are. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's start with W Media Business. What the W Media Business and how many countries that you cover so far? Well, uh, W Media today covers 16 countries. All right. And uh, W Media is a media events and marketing company currently catering to cloud IT data center enterprises throughout Asia and reaching a global audience. Well, we prefer to think of ourselves as a marketing agency and more of a community hub, a place through which experts and industry veterans can connect, share insights, and even build partnerships either digitally or physically. Um, our offerings range from large-scale cloud and data center conventions with thousands of attendees to bespoke digital marketing and campaigns uh, or curated webinars, but across all of these events, our global re goal remains the same, which is to give a platform to the people behind today's most cutting edge technology and connect them to stakeholders who matter. Well, we are based in Singapore, um, but currently we operate, as I mentioned earlier, in 16 countries and our footprint is constantly expanding. Mm, that's impressive. You are now already covered like 16 countries already, right? Yes, very uh, fast for a startup company. Yes, okay. So you guys are very smart. And uh, let me go on to the next question. Stephanie, as a startup in media industry, how do you see the challenge in media business? Mm, okay, so as with most startups, W Media was founded after identifying a gap in the market. So in our case, we saw a lack of specialized marketers that could elevate the business and investment in the cloud and data center industries, especially with emerging and non-native uh, English-speaking markets in Asia Pacific. Okay, so it is one thing to identify a gap in the market, but it's also another to fill that gap. Essentially, the greatest challenge comes down to finding the right people, uh, for us, we are looking for people who have the enthusiasm to fit into a marketing agency and are technically savvy enough to work with brands who are very high up in the tech fields. So mm -hmm. thankfully here in W Media, we have really uh, built a powerhouse team that is very dynamic, fast paced um, with the industry that we work with. Mm, okay, I confirm that your powerhouse team is really dynamic yes. and fast paced. <laughs> around the region. Cool. Cool. Okay. Um, next question, Stephanie. Mm -hmm. What are the business model and key to success and any other factors that you have which contribute to the advantages over big and established competitors? Mm, okay. So when we started off W Media, it was a very simple mission is to bring together the cloud and data center communities across Southeast Asia and really be the catalyst for industry growth and investments. Um, our mission, it actually grown very strongly over the years and into more locations. That's why Vincent mentioned we are in 16 countries. So we are very glad to expand into uh, Australasia, uh, Northeast Asia and South Asia after we have really grown our footprints in Southeast Asia. So you mentioned about the key to success. Well, the key to success lies very much in our global connections in the industry and our growing powerhouse again, <laughs> who has an extraordinary passion and speed to get ahead of trends. Mm -hmm. 
So, of course, we all have our own opinions on what sets us apart from our competitors. Uh, but based on our clients and attendees' feedback, uh, it really comes down to the countries that we are in and our expertise in content curation. So, with regards to content, I think this is best explained by our head of productions, Caroline Woods. So, over to you, Kelly. <laughs> Yeah, because I just want to talk about how obviously we do have competitors in this market. Um, but something that really sets us apart is, as Stephanie was saying, the content. So there are competitors who at the same time are producing webinars, newsletters, conventions, just as W Media is. Um, but it does take a dedicated team to uh, research the markets and stay on top of trends, especially in an industry that's as fast paced as uh, the IT and cloud and data centers are in 2020 and beyond. So beyond all the statistics you can obtain from reading reports or white papers, etc., it's really essential that you talk to the industry leaders themselves, um, listening to what people in the industry want to talk about, and then creating content that's in direct response to them, mm -hmm. instead of just creating a topic and then going out and finding people who want to speak on it, you know? So it might be a bit more of a time consuming approach. You know, it requires a lot of one-on-one -on -one calls, catch up conversations, collaborations, but it's something that uh, that's, the, that's the way that W Media has worked and will always work. And um, it's how we are able to both retain our audience and also constantly attract new audience members. Mm, okay, so the key to success is look like it starts from the passion of your people, the speed to get ahead, the trends, the quality of content, and the, your ability to make the global connection, especially in cloud and data center industry, right? Yeah, yeah, uh, precisely. Okay, now let's move to your focus to the digital infrastructure areas. The the data center providers in APAC are among the fastest growing in the world, right? Yes. So data centers just globally are at the heart of today's digital revolution. But APAC is a particularly exciting region to be in. Um, and of course, it's impossible to generalize about the whole of the APAC market. Because mm -hmm. within APAC, you have different countries with different degrees of maturation in the data center industry. Um, so, for instance, Singapore has remained the most developed in Southeast Asia, with Hong Kong situated to the north as a global, uh, these are the gateways to Asia, quote unquote. Um, but looking at Southeast Asia in particular, uh, there's no doubt that this will be the, the highest growth center for data centers in the world um, due to this region's accelerate, uh, accelerating adoption of cloud technology. Mm -hmm. uh, in particular, you want to look at co-location data centers um, in Singapore, Malaysia, and Indonesia. They are predicted to have a compound annual growth rate of 13% in this region between now and 2024. So I think that is within the broader APAC data center market. That is where you're going to see the most accelerated and interesting growth. Mm -hmm. Okay, and in the industry that you cover, which one that you find the significant growth in the digital infrastructure business and what are the key drivers? Yeah, um, there are a lot of variables at play. I think something that is kind of very relevant and topical right now is the rollout of 5G networks, um, which is going to increase the demand for stronger digital infrastructure across Southeast Asia. Um, and interestingly, it was Thailand who was the first in the ASEAN countries to, to provide commercial uh, 5G services last year. I think people were pegging Singapore or Malaysia to be the first out the gate. Um, mm -hmm. But Thailand was technically first, although it's not nationwide. Uh, but you can see there's a lot of co uh, competition among this, uh, these countries. And nearly every country has um, a pretty comprehensive plan and schedule for when they're going to roll out their 5G nationwide master plan. Um, so yeah, 5G is definitely one of the big topics that everyone is discussing. Um, and then of course, uh, because of how dramatically COVID-19 has reshaped business practices, you have certain countries that have 
effectively um, leapfrogged from old technology to next generation technology. So a good example of this is in payments. Um, essentially in more developing economies in Southeast Asia, um, they are completely skipping the credit card holder stage of payments. So you're going directly from cash to e-wallets and digital payments. Mm -hmm. So in Indonesia, you have Grab. In Thailand, you have Line. In Vietnam, you have uh, Viettel. All of them have payment uh, and wallets as part of their platforms. Um, so this like digital leapfrogging essentially allows these Asian countries, because they're developing so quickly, to kind of jump a couple steps. You know, they don't have to go from this technology to have a step up. They're going from this technology to a technology that's, you know, five steps above. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, the level of digital transformation that we're seeing in these countries, whether it is e-payments or contact tracing or remote working practices, um, this was not forecasted to happen until 2025 at the very least. Like that's when people mm -hmm. were thinking that we'd reach this level of digital saturation. But of course it's already here. And that is, you know, one of, I guess, the silver linings of um, COVID-19 and how that kind of reshaped business and economies in this, in this region. Mm. Okay, so COVID-19 is really the catalyst for uh, the digital transformation, right? And it's good to know that Thailand is the first in ASEAN to provide uh, commercial 5G services. Mm. Okay, then um, would you please share the sample of how each country differentiate itself and what kind of advantages and disadvantages that they have? Yeah, yeah. So um, we probably don't have time to go through every single country in, in South <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> the pros and cons of each of them. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, just for, for some examples. Um, you've certainly seen in the past few years uh, an increased focus and emphasis within each country trying to distinguish themselves on an individual level from their neighbors. Um, you know, find the quote unquote unique selling points for each market. Um, so I did mention like Thailand, like that they kind of pushed out 5G so that they could say they, they you know, they were the first. So that, that was like a policy initiative that they really drove. Um, but in other countries, for instance, a lot of the discussion in Vietnam um, around their digital infrastructure is centered on um, their long coastline. So the advantages that it gives uh, to Vietnam is that that is a, um, there's a lot of opportunity there for global connectivity via underwater cabling. Um, so just as you know, you have Japan and Hong Kong as sort of these gateways to the West, Vietnam is trying to center themselves similarly based on their coastline. Um, in Indonesia, you have this huge population which then translates to a huge startup ecosystem. Um, you know, there are so many tech unicorns in Southeast Asia that have come from Indonesia. Mm -hmm. um, and so in Indonesia, you see a lot of drive for cloud adoption and digital transformation um, at the startup and SME level. Whereas maybe in other countries, it is um, centered more on enterprises and large MNC, uh, MNC countries. Um, and then, yeah things like 5G in Thailand. So basically throughout different Southeast Asian countries, whether it is a geographical advantage, whether it is a demographical advantage in terms of population, or whether it's a policy advantage like the 5G rollouts, um, every country in the region is trying to highlight how they are setting themselves apart. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's interesting. Um, Caroline, from the past couple years, in terms of digital infrastructure landscape, especially data centers, China and Hong Kong led the market, following by India, Australia, Japan, and Singapore. Why Indonesia, Thailand, and Malaysia also made a sizable contribution towards the data center growth. How's your opinion for the future of this digital infrastructure landscape? What will make the shift and any impact from the big 
global technology companies like Google, Alibaba, Amazon, and Facebook. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I I think as I mentioned earlier, you can see COVID nineteen as this great equalizer almost because it gave um, the kind of spark for these less developed uh, countries from a in digital infrastructure standpoint to not necessarily catch up in the breadth and expanse of their digital infrastructure, but at least the quality of their infrastructure, even if it was isolated in certain um, areas within the country. So for instance, in Indonesia, if you go to Jakarta, you will have um, as sophisticated digital infrastructure as you have in Hong Kong. Obviously, the difference is in Hong Kong, it's very easy to cover the entirety of the city, or in Singapore, it's very easy to cover the entirety of the country. In these larger and more um, disparate countries like Indonesia, Philippines, Malaysia, there's going to be um, kind of hot spots of extreme connectivity and um, very sophisticated infrastructure, and then um, spots where there still needs to be expansion. And um, obviously the big tech giants, the Googles and Alibabas will um, always be able to make the first move because they have the greatest access to funds. So they'll always be the first players in these markets, but that doesn't mean that necessarily they're gonna dominate these markets forever. So I think um, looking at APAC generally, um, the place that the APEC market is going to make the largest impact globally is within small scale data centers, actually. Um, so the micro data center market, for instance, uh, I think it just topped four billion dollars uh, USD globally, and that was fueled primarily by the APEC region. Um, uh, I won't get into the details of what these data centers look like. It just, you know, data centers with 10 or fewer racks. So rather than huge hyperscale buildings, you have um, much smaller, more portable data centers um, that can be moved around and deployed in these regions that are not yet as digitally connected. Um, so you have modular mini micro data centers making up this market. Um, and it's really going to be one to watch in how, how it shapes this region's digital infrastructure. Um, and you see this primarily uh, because of the proliferation of IoT, so Internet of Things, all the different smart devices that you have in your home need to get their data and store their data somewhere close by. Um, and the increased interest in edge computing, which again is just um, storing data at the edge of the network close to the devices that are using it. Um, so these small and more portable data centers are gonna become increasingly common, I think. Um, now, there will always be a need for hyperscale, like, you know, huge warehouse-sized data centers in uh, sort of centers of population. Um, but based on the amount of data we are gen generating for society, it's not like the small data centers can eclipse the larger ones. Um, but these smaller and more versatile data centers uh, will allow formerly disconnected cities and populations um, the same level of connectivity as we enjoy in places like Singapore, like Jakarta, like Tokyo, for instance. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you would like to hear more from Caroline and Vincent and Stephanie about the industry stuff, uh, about digital infrastructure industry, then you have to follow my last question. My last question is relating to W Media. Could you please share the series of your technology events this year and where can our audience follow your show? Yeah, I mean, I think it's always better for people to tune in and listen to the actual experts rather than me. I'm just, <laughs> I'm relaying what I'm <laughs> the ones actually working in the field. So uh, w Media is constantly doing industry events, and so you can find all the most up-to-date info at our website. It is simply w.media, very easy to find. Um, in particular, right now, we are organizing a series of virtual conferences called Digital Week, um, and we will be exploring developments in digital transformation, cloud, and data center industries throughout different regions in APAC. So, um, we will have already done our, our first Southeast Asia Digital Week, 
but we also have digital weeks um, upcoming for South Asia, which will be India, Bangladesh, and Sri Lanka, and then Northeast Asia, which will be China, Hong Kong, Japan, and Korea. Mm -hmm. um, so those are going to be great. Um, while we are aiming to restart in-person conventions later in the year, um, there's so much happening in the um, cloud and data center industries. You know, I barely scratched the surface in our in our discussion just now that there is a real need to provide this space to connect and learn and network. So Digital Week is completely online, but it features hundreds of hours of presentations, um, engaging community forums, uh, international keynote speakers, um, and uh, sort of community engagement so that you can network online with, with peers in the industry. So it really it epitomizes the sense of community that W Media has come to represent in the IT sphere. Um, and anyone can register for Digital Week um, to expand their network, learn from thought leaders, uh, even find their next business partner perhaps, um, and you can do it from anywhere in the world. So we're excited to roll out that. Um, of course, uh, our conventions, our cloud and data center conventions, um, we are we have one in Seoul and Ho Chi Minh for June, and then we're moving on to Singapore in July, and then we have many more in the following months until the end of the year. So those will actually be in-person conventions. Um, and we will we will provide you with a full list of, of all the in-person and digital events. We might even add a few more in between now and then. So I think the best thing to do is if you're interested in, in joining the conversation or joining the community in any way to just head to our website and you can see it all there. Okay. And these are Vincent, Stephanie, and Caroline from W Media. Thanks a lot for sharing your thought and market sentiment in APAC region to our open tech community. We do hope you can travel to Thailand and other of your target countries soon and look forward to collaborating with you. Thank yes, you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. This is Open Talk program under Open Tech Technology Challenge Platform powered by TCC Technology Group. If you like us, don't forget to click like and subscribe to TCC Technology YouTube channel. See you in our next Open Talk. สวัสดีค่ะ